the Douglas Eagles in the house tonight for the Sparks Industrial Monday Night Preview Show at Sparks Orthopedic here in Rainbow City. So that's a mouthful. It is. <laughs> uh, these guys are on, are having a great season so far. They qualified for the playoffs for the first time in 23 years. We're going to let these guys introduce themselves, starting over here with 99. Terry Emerson, and freshman. Charlie Fontaine, junior. Reagan Emerson, senior. Cooper Butler, sophomore. <laughs> I saw, I'm sorry, Lance. Cooper Butler. Can you tell all of America who your cousin is? <laughs> Jacob Dindy. On to the next. On to the Guys, you're uh, coming off a pretty huge win over West Point last week, uh, 34-14 win, and that pretty much that was that that's sold up the fourth spot in the playoffs for you guys. Talk to us about that game. Just uh, give us a rundown on that game, how everything kind of transpired, and then we'll move on to my next question. Uh, we just went in there with two more shoulder, knew we was gonna take care of business, and Chris to the game easy. They, we got down 13 to 14, but we bounced back pretty quick. That's oh, pretty good. Then. <laughs> uh, okay, I got what? Do what? How much did y'all get down at one point? 14, 13. Okay, this is one point. Oh, okay. All right, go ahead. Uh, like he said, we started off strong. We went up 13 nothing before halftime. Came out third quarter. They ended up getting a pick six. Then fourth quarter started it. They ran in the touchdown to make it 14, 13. But unlike years in the past, we didn't drop our heads. We you know picked each other up. Next drive, we went down with the ball pretty well. And then Reagan here caught a 40 yard passing or receiving touchdown. Nice. And pretty much put the game on us. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we did. We came out pretty strong. Uh, we went down 14-13, came back, had like two rushing touchdowns back to back after our defense got a stop. So nice, Mr. Sure, uh, Dibby. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I moved in the middle of the season, so uh, I had to forego my or force out. My whole year eligibility, so I'm not able to play this whole season. Okay. Uh, so I can get my take from the sideline, I guess. Because I mean, <laughs> that's fine. We'll take uh, that. This you came from Alabama, correct? Right? Mm -hmm. So all right, and now you've done over here. Is what's, yeah, I came back to Douglas. What's what's life been like since you've been back here? In Douglas? I love it. Everybody's been so welcoming. That's like, right. it's been. I'll be honest with you. When I, when I thought about it, I, it was a big headache because it's like I'm coming back to the school I already came from. That's the biggest thing, and I was wanted to be welcoming. And they were 100%. It was That's good. really awesome, and I'm glad to be part of this team now. i got two more years to play my heart out for this team. So it'll be awesome. Oh, nice. Uh, I guess my next question is, knowing that you guys did something uh, that a lot, for the first time in uh, 23 years at Douglas, what was that feeling like after that game was over and you knew you just walked up the playoff spot? It was great. The film was great. Everything was great. Get the dump Gatorade on coach. That's <laughs> okay. There, there's so much emotions running through. Like, because of Douglas, I'm a junior, but all the way through middle school, my freshman year, I've seen coaches come in, come out, give up on us. Coach Lawless came in my sophomore year, and he just kind of he told us, he said, "Look, I'm gonna be here." He's like, "I'm gonna be here unless they fire me or make me quit." He said, and before some of y'all leave high school, he said, "I'm gonna get y'all to playoffs," and then. After Friday night's game, we was just like, mine's racing. So, before we move on to the to Mr. Reagan over here, uh, y'all made a bet with Coach Lyles. Talk to us about that. <laughs> well, Dad. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, before week zero against Weaver, Coach Lyles, Monday, came in. He was like, all right, boys, it's game week. He was like, I'm going to make a promise to y'all right now beginning the season. He said, Y'all make the playoffs this year? He said, I'll let all y'all shave my head. He also did say we could dye his beard. He didn't hold up that end. But he did hold up the end of the shaving the head. Yeah. Well, nice. after Friday night's game, he came up to us. He was like, well, now I know what I'm going to be dreading all weekend. <laughs> Today we went through a little walkthrough and uh, kind of, you know, recovered on a Monday. Yeah. After practice, he was hiding in his office. And me and Reagan mm -hmm. drug him out. Went <laughs> and went, we sat him outside in front of the field. I was like, oh, just took a little snippet off the top. Nice. And Coach Smith fixed him up. Nice. So what color are y'all going to dye his beard? Red. 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 Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Man, he's got to do this. You know, this is on camera now. So he's got to do it. Coach Lyles, you've been called out on camera. You've got to dye your beard. Oh, you did tell the guys at the end of the season that 
<laughs> you will let them cut your hair and dye your beard. So <laughs> it's on camera. It's on record. Um, so it's got to be done, buddy. Hey, we got them up pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> pretty nice. bad. See, now I wish you had came down here because we could have did it on, on camera. Because dyed the beard. Oh. That was <laughs> tough. That was so we called him out. Uh, hey, remember uh, this is like after Josh? Oh yeah. Yeah, tell them about that. Josh, uh, oh, yeah, I remember was that. it was it the Pipe Ohatchee game? No, no, it was Ohatchee and Collins. Oh, Ohatchee and Collins Bowl. Uh Josh got to edit our videos, <laughs> made a bet with Collins Bowl and told them that, that if they beat Ohatchee, that he they could shave his He had one of his handlebars. So yeah. he, oh, I mean, he took that time and, and, and it went out curled around. Yeah, he took a lot of time and, and, and grew that mustache. Well, off the and <laughs> guess what happened that Friday night? Collinsville went down and beat Ohatchee. At Ohatchee. Wow. At Ohatchee. Wow. Nice Not a creek bank. At 19, Ohatchee's on the field of rank two in the state right by the five. Wow. <laughs> Collinsville went over there and beat them. That daggum girl name. And Josh, <laughs> they just wait, boy. I remember they were screaming on the sidelines after the game. I got a video of one of them. Yeah, so we got the Clippers coming for your. We, we got to edit out what Trevor was saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was it was it was pretty funny. So I think those files now it's on camera, it's on record. So he's got to do it. No, uh, he made a promise. So, yeah. so we got y'all out with that. <laughs> so if it happens, you got to send us a picture and we'll post it. Oh, okay. gotcha. All right. Uh, so y'all have so y'all have Crossville this week. Um, another region game. Um, a game like this could be a trap game, but I know you guys are not gonna. Going to fall into that trap. Y'all are going to go out and play, uh, play to your highest level. But uh, what are you, what are y'all seeing on film from Crossville this year? Crossville on record looks bad, but watching film, Crossville has some dudes that can play if they really want to. I think what's hurting them is like the situation that hurt us a while back is just not having. I mean, their their old coach that's been there for a while just left last year, mm-hmm. going into this season. I mean, they do they got some dudes that can play and they, they could. If we don't show up with our best game, they could easily beat us if they wanted to. But I don't. I, I think our players are ready for this week, and we know how big this game will be going for our record and setting more history in our school. So I, th- I think our guys are going to be prepared. Which, which coach? Darnell? Or what coach? Both of our dead I think. Yeah. You said your old coach. Their old coach, he went to Boaz. So I think it was yeah. Coach Darnell. Well, yeah, Coach yeah. Darnell. Josh, Josh I thought you meant he coached these guys. No, 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 no. no. He All coached right. at Crossville. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Josh Taylor, I met him. He's a pretty nice guy. And I think he's 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 trying to rebuild that program. I think they'll be fine in a few years. I know a couple of coaches on that staff this year. Yeah. Yeah, that, their numbers is they're fluctuated, man. They've, uh, they've struggled, you know, to get players out. They had a lot of players leave and move to Turley. That's right. That's right. They're yeah. Right. You got to think they're essentially – Playing five A schools with like two three A talents sometimes, you know what? Yeah, that's how we that's that's how it was last year for us. I mean, yeah, we started off very no, but having twenty six kids on the team in five A football, tough. Yeah, you can't win a lot of games. No, no yeah. substitutes. Players tired and stuff. All right, one of the witty questions. All right, here we go. Oh, All right, everybody wants. You know, y'all got a chance to win seven games. It'll be Crossville this week, Fisk next week, and everybody wants to be around a winner. So since y'all started winning, have y'all noticed a lot of attention from the lady folks you live with Alabama? Well, three of us can't answer that question. Cooper, now you you, you uh, let's hey, My part two question is: Which is one of the four of y'all's the latest man? Bull crap! Don't point at me. I, I can answer that question. I, this this is what I've, I've, I've seen on, on Facebook. Uh, I think it's Mister Fontaine right there. You point at me. Well, he's a one woman man, correct? Right. Yes. 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 Yeah. This yeah. yeah. Stacy, right? She. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, if you're watching this, you didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> We're just giving him a hard time. Don't break up with him now. <laughs> but I'm surprised Mr. Uh, Dandy over here, his cousin, he's not the, the ladies' man. Nah. I got some similarities to him, but I'm a different person. He's he's out there more than I am. God. I talk as much as him, but it's just the way he talks is a little different. He's something else. He is. <laughs> He's something else. Caleb, you got anything for him? No, I'm glad for the fact he said the way he talks is a little different. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good in this case. I said Diddy could be 
stiff where we met him with another. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, just, just good luck to you guys and keep your heads down and continue to be humble about, even though you got a streak going on, going into, you know, a lot of success for your school history, just keep your heads down and keep on playing well. So, yes, sir. Yeah, that's that right. Did right, you guys get enough to eat? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, and you, good luck to you guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, our next team in on our Monday night preview, uh, Sparks Industrial, a.k.a. the Ty Hunt Bandits, is the Coosa Christian Conquerors. And at this time, I'm going to let these gentlemen introduce themselves, starting with this young man on the far left. DJ Smith. Teddy Whitmire. Thomas Gaggs. Leo Ryan. Coach Whitmire. Vladimir Whitmire of the Coosa Christian Conquerors. <laughs> Coach, uh, take us back to last Friday. I know that was going to be a tough game uh, coming into the season. Everybody deemed them, you know, the odds on favorite to win the region this year. And they haven't really disappointed. I mean, they lost to Cedar Bluff, but um, uh, you know it's going to be a tall task going to a senior laden team at something Christian. Take us back to last Friday night and what all transpired. I thought we'd come out kind of flat. First touchdown we've given up on special teams this year. First points, I think, we've given up on, on special teams. Uh, very first kickoff, guys running out of their lanes. Um, it, they just don't take it serious sometimes, I don't think, when I say it's very important. We, and we practice it over and over again. And, um, and it showed Friday. Everybody thinks somebody else is going to play. That's right. That's right. Waiting on somebody else to make a play instead of just going to make it themselves. But um, um, we just come out flat, man. I thought we, uh, <clears throat> we didn't execute very well. So the, Now, defensively, Defensively, you guys have made strides this year. Yeah. Last year, you were giving up at this point 44 points a game, and you've cut that down to – 25. 25, points. I think, a game, yeah. So, you've cut that almost in half. Um, where do you, how do you feel about this defense at uh, this point in the season? Uh, I feel like we can still get a lot better. I feel like we're nowhere near uh, playing to the capability that we are. Um, we've still got guys not – it's just – just guys can't play through being tired. It's a 1A school. Guys are going to play both ways. Um, they they just don't know how to keep pushing when they're tired. They get a little selfish and think about, <clears throat> well, I'm a little tired, so I'm going to take off this play instead of doing what I'm supposed to do and, and uh, fighting for the rest of my team. So, um, I, At this point, it's, you shouldn't be having to worry about who, you, who you're going to play this Friday. That's right. And this Friday, I'm, going to, I'm still going to make some changes because I'm going to find 11 that want to be out there. And want to play, ever play. Now, Vince Lombardi said it best. You know what quote I'm talking about? If the team makes cowards of us all. Out, out of everyone. That's, that's, that's right. exactly right. Can't think when you're tired. And that's, that, you know, the first thing, first thing that goes when you're tired is, is your brain. So. Yeah. Uh, you guys got a pretty tough game coming up this week. Yeah. Same blood. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure y'all watched film already. I know you have. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, it's fast. Let's film you watch right now. If coach was to check your out. I pull it up. Mm. Uh, Probably zero. Zero. <laughs> I <know>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so well, what have you seen from those guys uh, offensively uh, on film? Very big front. <clears throat> if you get into them, they'll block you. Um, <clears throat> quarterback's good. They're a senior laden team. I think they got 12 seniors, I think, maybe. Wow. That's uh, a lot somewhere around 10 to 12 seniors again. Um, I could be a little high on the 12, um, but it's pretty close, 10, 12, something like that. Um, six can go, uh, 15 can go, three can go, eight can go. Um, did I say six? Yeah. Six can go. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's dangerous on punt return. Six is dangerous on kickoff return. He's dangerous as a receiver. He's dangerous as a running back. So he's kind of like Fred Cleveland. He's he's right. Yeah, exactly. He's a Swiss Army. Exactly. Guy. Exactly. So, you got your hands, so what you're saying, you got your hands full. <clears throat> We've got our hands full. So we're we're gonna go out and do the best we can. You get your hands full about he's going to the ground, correct? Man, a few words. <laughs> yeah. DJ, take us back to last Friday. Did you get to play? I did. How did that go? It went all right. You have any soreness? A lot. Really? Yes, sir. How'd you do offensively? I caught a couple passes. Let's try to keep you under wraps. Mm -hmm. What about you, Skaggs? Uh, you play about how many positions you play on offense last week? All of them. Did you? <laughs> so it's that, it's that line, though. Yeah, it's that line. So you played H, they're all of them. H, Y, quarterback, and no, 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 no
Did you get Did you get to hit anybody? Hmm. Well, if they push you at running back, you have it, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Clay, like Clay, you did play some running back, didn't you? Mm-hmm. How'd that go? Um, <clears throat> pretty good. I heard you lowered your head quite a few times. <clears throat> <laughs> That's all I like to do. <laughs> Teddy said that you don't look to open space, you look for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, man. Yeah. I love it, dude. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, man, talk about the state of love, their perennial power. And, yeah. you know, last year's the first time they had one of that region in years. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Not ahead in a while. Yeah. So, uh, hey, Coach Beckett, that's doing a good job, man. Yeah. Yeah. Very good job. Very good job. job. Right now, you know, I think they've got the region locked up. They do have they the region know. locked up. Yeah. Maybe we'll come in lowly. Yeah. Sweet, man. What do you think? I don't think so, man. We got a, <laughs> we, we've got homecoming. We've got all kinds of things for uh, eighth and ninth and tenth graders to be distracted. So um, their attention span is already bad. So I figure, uh, I figure homecoming, throw homecoming on that, and we'll come out flat again. So do you think homecoming is going to count for about ten points negative for you? At least, at least. I figure we'll give up a couple more kickoff returns for touchdowns and see what else we can mess up. Coach, would you go to battle with these three guys? Ooh. All right, let's not say war, but would you go to a water balloon battle with these Well, these three, they've they, they put out pretty good on defense. They And I can just speak for defense. I don't have nothing to do with offense. So, Would you, you go to a water balloon battle with them? Water balloon battle? He's, his arm's awful, so. He... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody yeah, I, I go to war with Cleek, yeah. <laughs> DJ? DJ. DJ's tough, DJ? too. I go, yeah. yeah. DJ, you got to leave the ladies alone, man. We've got to focus on the I go to war with Skaggs. I'm not like to mess with Skaggs. <laughs> I think we got three ladies, man. But yeah, they think they are. Yeah. The Skaggs' hair. Yeah. The Skaggs? It's the curly hair. You use that to pick up some girls, man? <laughs> he perms it every day. Do you know that? He yeah. perms yeah. <laughs> every day. Really? <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't know you used the perm. You did a perm? No motion right there. <laughs> <laughs> Cleet's got the surfer going on. That's not natural, Scott. Cleet's got yes, it. Is. <laughs> Cleet, Cleet's got that point of going on. Yeah, he does. He just throws his hair back. <laughs> well, guys, we're gonna let y'all get out of here. It's a Monday. I'm sure y'all ready to go home and relax after a long full day of listening to Coach Vladimir Whitmire. <laughs> and good luck to you guys on Friday. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right, our next team in on our uh, Sparks Industrial Monday Night Preview Show is Sandrock. Coach. Uh, brought to you live at Sparks Orthopedic and Rainbow Drive. Now, um, Coach, we're going to start over here with you, let you introduce yourself and pass it on down. I'm Coach Allen Heath, the head football coach at Sandrock. I'm Brian East, I'm a senior, I'm a defensive end, right guard and kicker. I'm Heath Driver, I'm a senior, I play wide receiver and outside linebacker. I'm um, Ace Ashley, I'm a junior and I'm quarterback. Now, Coach, uh, I don't want to start this interview out on a negative tone, but we're going to go ahead and throw this out here. There's uh, been two weeks that you haven't shown up for these, and uh, why don't you tell everybody what's happened uh, those two weeks? Well, those have been the two losses we've had. So I, I told them today, I said, by God, we're going tonight. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, I mean, one of them was last week. I mean, in a big ball game, we lost by one point. And Coach, um, Jeff Allen, actually, I don't know if you heard his interview, Coach Howard after the game, but yeah. Jeff Allen had, had multiple people call in and talk about the atmosphere and said that, that I mean, y'all, you guys had like a seven thousand dollar gate or something like that, and talked about how huge of a game atmosphere that y'all presented for them, and then Cooper Austin followed that up talking about how you know Spring Garden shook for a little bit before they got their legs up under. Was like, hey man, talk about that atmosphere last Friday night and what's important to that. In my book, is something that you guys, including the coaches, obviously, and the town and the school has built up coming from last season was it three and seven? Yes, sir. To where you guys are sitting right now, and the improvement you made, and, and and it just boils over into the you know student section, the fan, the community about where your program is right now. Well, I mean, you know, having that kind of atmosphere, I mean, it was a playoff atmosphere. You know, we were, I mean, both teams are in the playoffs, but that was not a playoff game. That was a, I mean. It was a game where they clinched the region, and if we won it and then won again this week against Cleveland, then we would have won the region. You know, it was one of those games. It was very uh, – had a lot of implications to it. And, um, you know, I think it's easy to forget that just a year ago, I mean, 
we were three and seven basically buying their time to get get done with the season, hope nobody got injured or anything, you know. And um, it, it, we are we, we look like a totally different football team, and it's easy to forget that. I mean, that's you know, uh, we're right there playing with you know the number three team in the state, and um, I mean we're up fourteen nothing on one point. They're a great football team. They really are. Coach Howard does a great job. They got great players, um, well coached, disciplined, and so. We were right there, and, and we came up a little bit short, and that's on me. I won't blame it on anybody but me. There's, you know, anytime you watch film, you're going to go and find some calls, you know, some play calls you might like to have back. And that's, I had them against Spring Garden Friday night. I had them in the win against West End the week before, and the win against Locust for, the week before that, and the win against Collins the week before that. They lost Southeastern, several of them. I mean, you know, every time you watch film, you're going to have some things you wish you could change, go back and make better. Um, but, but beyond that, um, I think that, the progress that we've made as a program. And that's what, you know, uh, I, I want to try and instill in these kids is that, you know, if you're bought into what we're doing, then a hiccup like that, losing by one point to a, a really good football team, that shouldn't affect your attitude or your behavior. And, then, you know, we should still continue to believe in what we're doing. And if you really believe in what we're doing, then it won't. Now, if you don't, if you fake like you believe in what we're doing, then you can go out there and then something bad happens and you pout and act like something, you've been wronged or something or you haven't been treated right. So, I mean, that's something that is a program we're working towards making sure that we're uh, handling success and failure the right way because, you know, one failure does not a season make. Now, I mean, we're not in the playoffs yet. Now, if that had been a playoff game, the season been over. But it's not over. We're in the playoffs. You know, I mean, it could have helped us with seeding, but it's still, I mean, it's a big deal. And, and like I said, we're playing a really good football team. There's no excuses. Hey, you know what? I think we should have won that ball game. If I'd have done some stuff differently, we could have. But you know what? That goes for a lot of other people, too. And so, um, and we're really we're working towards that, and that's part of building the program is getting to where you, you, you know how to win, how to lose, and um, you know you hope you don't have to go through the losses, but a lot of times you're going to have to face one or two. I mean, we were, I was talking to some of them earlier about 2001, Hope's Bluff lost two regular season football games, Litchfield and Plainview went on one state championship. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so it's all how you respond to adversity. If you want to pout and go lay in the corner and cry and act like, oh, poor pitiful me, then you're a loser and you're probably going to lose some more. That's right, man. Because it could turn a spark, could turn into a fire that exactly. could burn the whole season down. And, and attitude is everything. I and mean, that's why I say circumstances don't determine outcome. Attitude and performance do. Absolutely. I remember what Ty Hunt did at the state championship game. But that's for another video. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question for you guys. This coach he was talking about uh, attitude and everything. You know, since he's been there, have y'all seen the things that he's been telling y'all? Has it has it kind of sunk in to y'all? Um, what he's been telling y'all was like, hey, you know, this man, he, he knows what he's talking about. Um, talk about the, the changes of the program since he's been there and, and the things he's been telling y'all. Uh, this is stuff that he's done for us. Like, even, <clears throat> even just working out has changed, like, just insane. Like, what we do now in the season workout is like what we used to do in the summer to get better. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody is pretty much bought in, and that's really a good thing not to be a winning team. Um, I think – it started a lot in the weight room as people were noticing themselves getting a whole lot stronger than they were before just in weeks and weeks and weeks. And I, I think that started to get people bought in a lot more. And then it kept the momentum going into the season. We were all squatting 455, 500 pounds, deadlifting 500 pounds. You got that on the bar, I mean, you feel like nothing can stop you. I, I feel like the biggest thing was him putting confidence in us. I mean, he, he was always giving us – Little phrases here and there that the confidence in us. And some of them were better than others. <laughs> some of them we can't repeat. Shut up, but... <laughs> <laughs> but that was the big thing. So he put confidence in all of us, which helped everybody to buy into the program. Right, right. I mean, I mean, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the team that made semifinals last year, undefeated this year, ranked number three, I mean, I know that's got to – even though you didn't win the game, I know – in the back of your mind, you're like, we're pretty, we're pretty good balls, ball club. So, man, I mean, hats off to you guys, man. Well, know. you know, a, a loss is never accepted. No. Ever. Under any circumstances, and it never will be. I mean, I felt like uh, I, my, son, my son was still sick from Friday night. I mean, really, seriously, like, seriously sick. Yeah. And um, I could barely even eat any pizza out there. Um, but what it boils down to, though, and the reason why is because you know, I love these kids, and I work my tail off for them. I want them to be successful. I mean, I'm too old, you know, for it to, I'm not going to get anything. I mean, I, what I got is the satisfaction of seeing them be successful because, I mean, you know, I'm five, six years away from retirement. Yeah. I mean, you know, so it's not like, uh, 
I'm, I'm looking for some lawyers, and I want to see them be good. And that's what we work hard for. And I think most of them understand that. Most of them know that I love them. Now, some of them, are, you know, maybe they don't know that. But, but most of them do know that. And I tell them every day, so I don't know how they could not know that. But, <laughs> um, because I do. You know, I'm tough on them because I love them. I mean, that's like, if I didn't care about them, I'd tell them to go play Marco Polo on Highway 411 or something. <laughs> <laughs> This, this game Friday night is, it depends on whether or not we host the first round playoff game or we travel. And we cross with the, the Florence West Alabama region. So you're looking at a two and a half, three hour drive. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, whatever challenge comes our way, but we'd rather it be yeah. the challenge that comes to us rather than us coming to that challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So, how was today's practice as far as terms of mental focus and concentration? Was it there or did you see anything that needed to get better? Well, no, there's always things that need to get better. You never, I mean, there's no such thing as perfection. You strive for it, but you're never going to reach it. Now, um, I, I, uh, I had some points I wanted to make today, so I was probably a little bit uh, tense, I guess could be the word. Yep. Um, but that, that being said, um, the kids actually, we had a pretty good practice. Just about every session, you know, one of the assistants would come over to me, or somebody would come over to me and say, oh, that was a pretty good, that was a pretty good uh, period, wasn't it, Cuff? Yeah, it was good. I mean, <laughs> but, uh, but like I said, there's... Um, we're still we're still building towards being you know that that successful program. And I told him I said you know uh, I'm sure I mean I don't know 100 percent because I'm not there, but I guarantee you that that Fox are going to get better today after their first loss in what 50 something games. Yeah. Um, and I said and that's what we got to do. We can't lay around here and pout and think oh spring guards are robbable or spring guards. Blah, blah, blah. I said spring guards over. That's over with. You know well we got to focus on Cleveland trying to win a ball game because that's what winners do. Even if you fall down on so how you respond, how you get up, that's what matters. That's right. Yep. You said you had six years of retirement. I don't know what you do when you retire. Be a motivational speaker. If I don't die of a heart attack or stroke before that. <laughs> <laughs> so, y'all. So, how many clipboards did you break Friday night? I had to ask you several. I actually week. didn't break any. Um, I, uh, I've been trying to be a kinder, gentler. You know. That's what I'm known for anyway. He's, he's getting competition now. The defensive coordinators. Broke one at practice. Yeah, practice. That's pretty bad. Have you yeah. broke one at practice, Coach? No, not practice. I'm, I'm practice. Like I said, I'm not Scott practice. I've never. It's just ball games. You get intense. No. I'm Is that not. fake news? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, probably worse at, like fake news. I'm probably worse at practice than every ball game. But, uh, no, I, uh, I really I didn't, I didn't break in. Now, I wanted to a couple of times. But, uh, Coach, you always tell us you got to look. Uh, who do you think you look like? Last time I was the lead singer at Elo. Who do you yeah. look like today? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen myself. I probably look homeless if I had to guess. <laughs> I haven't had a haircut or shaved or anything else. Uh, and, uh, but I, I'm seriously contemplating. Like, I went Saturday morning. I, I got up and I said, I, want, I need to go get, at least get my hair trimmed a little bit. Because it's in my dang eyes. That's ridiculous. I hadn't had hair that long. I didn't have hair that long in high school. Uh, so uh, I, I went to, and it was a dang hour wait. To get a haircut, I said, I don't have an hour. I got work to do. So I just left. Um, uh, but I don't know. I, yeah, I thought about getting some scissors and just cutting myself. I'd end up looking like Lloyd Christmas or something. <laughs> Whoa. How about, That's such how, about awesome. this? how about this? How about this? Got a proposal for you. Y'all beat Cleveland Friday night. These guys put your hair. <laughs> That's fair. I don't know. We'll see. Get your hand. Hey, girl, hey, 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 how about I cut my hair however I want to? You got no say in How's that? How about this? Shave your head and then they get to do whatever with your beard. Hey, beat Cleveland, then we'll talk. Yeah, yeah, how about that? Beat Cleveland, then we'll talk about it. Something beard. about his hair is going to change. Yeah, something about his hair is going to change. And they get to vote. They get to vote. Oh, burn. Oh, yeah. Burn. Burn. Oh. Yeah. Burn. oh. Yeah. Well, it, it, I just put it in braids like corn. <laughs> it's about long enough. It looks ridiculous. It's the horrors. <laughs> The other day, I, I, get, I, 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 get, I get out of the shower and I, and I, you know, I get the brush and I get, get 
just weigh it. You know, it's the kind of guys. Have you ever seen No Country for Old Men? <laughs> I look like the guy with the bolt gun in No Country for Old Men. And SRW on the side. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> y'all ain't seen that. I'm sure y'all know who he's talking about. He, he showed me the picture. Okay. <laughs> do, 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 do I know like that? Yeah. I'm glad they What is his name in that? I can't remember. I don't remember. You'd have to look up No Country Film and you can play like the villain or something like that. That's what I look like. Uh, but while he's looking that up, <laughs> talk to us about this Cleveland team, Coach. At one point, they scored 60 points a game. I don't know what they're averaging now. Uh, I'm sure it's still in the high 40s minimum. Yeah. Uh, talk about this team, the problems they present. Uh, they're one of the fastest football teams of any classification I've seen in years. They, uh, they're running back, they're quarterback, both are speed demons. They have closing speed in the secondary. Um, they are uh, well coached. Coach Gillen does an excellent job. Um, I, uh, I, I genuinely like, they are an excellent football team. Um, they're right up there with Spring Garden. They're a, uh, one of the better, one of the better, uh, that's how it looks. They're one of the better uh, football teams that, uh, in 2A, I think. I think they have, uh, you know, uh, one of the best teams, like I said, I've seen in years, all, overall. Like I, I've coached in 4A, 6A, 7A. They're a good football team. I mean, you know, they gave on, a good on the team to run for their money in week zero. They did. I was about to bring that up. Yes, and, and they actually beat Spring Arbor. They had to uh, and had, had the forfeit. Yeah, the kid didn't move or something. Yeah, something like that. And look, Coach Gillen's a great guy. I've, I've talked yeah, he's to him. He's reported that. This yeah, he, he, he like I can't. Uh, he's he's a good guy. And I mean, I've been mean, anybody talked about you know uh, talking after the season some about some things because I'm interested in some of the things that they do. I mean, you're always learning. I and mean, I'm watching film on them. I'm wondering. What, what makes him do so? Which, because it's good. Like, well, you know, well, that's a good idea. What, what makes you decide to do that? How do you implement that and that kind of thing? So I'm going to talk to him some after the season just for that reason because, I mean, they're well coached. They're uh, great athletes. Um, we got a work cut out for us. Now, that, that being said, um, can we beat him? Yeah. I mean, you can beat anybody you play. That's why you play the ball game. Um, so I'm not sitting back here saying, oh, they're going to come in and beat Rush. I don't think so. But uh, we need to really prepare well. We need to understand what we were up against. We need to have positive attitudes. We need to get over last week. Yeah. Okay? Hey, yeah, Spring Garden beat us. All right? Now let's go play Cleveland. That's what we got to do. And if we, we want to dwell on stuff that's happened in the past, I mean, you know, what, what is the policy? You know, what, the one thing I, I do is I look forward. I don't look behind me. I look forward, keep pressing forward. Um, that's, uh, that's what we've got to do in order to be successful. And so that's what we are uh, – uh, looking to do this week, you know, tomorrow, Tuesday. And, I mean, think about it, guys. That, that week nine's here. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, we're already up on week nine. It's unbelievable. It's almost over. And the older I get, the faster they go by. It seems like, like you know, we hardly even have time. I mean, I still have to go home and do a practice schedule and stuff tonight. But, I mean, they go by so quick. It's, oh, it snaps by. Like oh, yeah. What's, what's your guys' mindset to do exactly what Coach just said? Put that one in the rear view and focus on this team that's one of the most dangerous teams, obviously, in 2 Yeah, like he said, uh, just focus on them. Spring Garden's over. There's nothing we can really do about it. We just have to focus on them. Uh, when, we're, when we're watching film, I know they got a big line, so that's one thing i got to do is keep low and drive my feet. No, no. I feel is if everyone executes the way they've been taught, I mean, we're putting them in, in front is – this week that I like. And I think if we can just execute all of our jobs the way that you need to do it, then you can win. I feel like the biggest thing is going back and finding the mistakes you made. You can go back, find the mistakes you made, correct those for the next week. It, it'll help you going into the future weeks just because you're not making the same mistake week after week after week. That's right. You can go in, fix it, learn from your mistakes, and play better ball. I could have said this thing, I've seen them. They are fast, man. That's why everything you got to do has got to be crisp, precise, and a lot of hesitation. So the ball step, you got to know where to go, and you better go 100 miles an hour every single play, all 11, or you're going to find yourself in trouble. So, but the ball's in your court, though. You know what I mean? Y'all need this one. The difference in hosting and traveling in the playoffs is, is everything. So. Uh, all right, guys. So good luck to you guys. I know you got to make the trip back to San Rock. And, uh, 
that picture. Maybe we'll get Josh to put that picture up. So I could. Yeah. Good luck, you guys. I appreciate it. Thank y'all. Thank you. All right. Our next team in on our Sparks Industrial Monday Night Preview Show is Spring Garden. I uh, love to have these guys in. They always get to make the trip, Coach, because it's not right around the corner. It's a little bit of a drive for you guys, but I definitely appreciate you guys coming in. I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves. At this time, start with Coach. Uh, Jason Howard, head coach, Spring Garden. Chuck Pope. Cabral. Coach, last week, man, I, I remember driving home. Uh, I was coming back from Clay and Benson and uh, heard you on the radio listening to the whole entire interview. And uh, before you came on, Jeff Allen just talking about what a, a good atmosphere it's had to be and a good old-fashioned football game. Mm-hmm. But to play a, a, a team uh, that's been on the rise, I mean, one of the most improved teams in the state, one through seven, eight. Uh, honestly, I think they are. And um, being a cross-county rivalry like that and, and to win, and the way you won, uh, which is pretty special, and I heard your story on the radio how that all happened. Uh, take us back to last Friday night, that 29-28 victory, and what, what that what all transpired. No, I mean, it's a rival game. I mean, us in San Rock, our uh, girls had played them in the volleyball finals on Thursday night. Uh, we knew, you know, that was a good atmosphere for that game, and we figured it'd spill over to the football game, and it did. Uh, packed house, uh, coach said they had over a $7,000 gate for that mm-hmm. game, so, I mean, big gate for them. Uh, and, and I think everybody came out wanting to see, you know, sort of a measuring stick. I think San Rock, you know, was using it as a measuring stick to sort of see where they were. And like I said, it was a challenge to us. And we knew that was going to bring a lot of energy. We talked about it all week. We thought they'd bring a lot of energy into the game. And I felt like Coach Heath had a good game plan for it. And they did. They came out with a lot of energy and jumped on us early. Uh, our kids responded, never put their heads down, fought back through several uh, things where we got down and we got down again and stuff like that. But, you know, I don't think our, I don't think our kids ever thought that we was going to lose. And I mean, that's a big mindset that we have there. And, you know, we talk about it's, uh, part of winning is believing you're going to win. So, and that, that's sort of where we was at. And like I said, it, it, it was a fun game. It was. Now, um, one thing you said there that sticks out, how long did it take to create that mindset? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that not used to always be the case at Spring Garden. It, it did. And then, I mean, you, I won my first game I coached at Spring Garden, and we lost our next 17. And then won again, and then a couple years later, we got five and five. Then it was. Was it coming with the torches to burn your house back up? <laughs> no. Nah, actually, <laughs> funny story on that. These, two, these two's going to be here going, I told you he'd talk the whole time. But, <laughs> you know, that's just part of it. Are you guys uh, about to get on there, too? Probably. Whenever I got hired, Mr. Welch hired me. And he told me, he said, hey, he said, the best part about this job is the worst part about this job. Nobody's going to ever expect you to win. He said, no expectation. We just got to have a football team. Because I took over, and it hadn't been seven, too many years before that they folded the program. Uh, and, you know, he told me, he said, the worst part about the job is also the best. There's not going to be any pressure to win, and nobody's going to expect you to win. And I said, well, if I'm coming, I'm expecting to win. That's right. You know, uh, it was sort of the same situation when I took a basketball job at Cedar Bluff. Everybody said, man, that's a, that's a death job. Don't take it because nobody's ever going to win at Cedar Bluff. And I said, well, we can change that. And uh, that's sort of the mentality that uh, we took. I had one of the former coaches at Spring Garden say, Coach, if you win three ball games, they're going to have a parade in the street. If you ever go <laughs> five and five, man, they're going to shut the school down and celebrate. And, you know, and now, you know, we talked about today when we finished practice that because we was on them pretty hard and we said, don't, don't think that we don't enjoy winning because we do enjoy winning. But the expectation and the standard is, yeah, we're eight and zero, but it's still we didn't play good. We didn't play good, and that's not what we expect and what we want. And we're pushing to make a run. I mean, you know, and that's all these guys have ever grown up knowing. And you know, a lot of people came before them, went through some hard knocks and stuff, uh, and then once we turned that corner and kids started believing, then I mean, there's not a there's not a recipe for it. It just sort of happens. And then when you get that group that buys in, and then the next group sees that success and they buy in, and then you got it back where you want it. 
But before I turn these guys loose, one more thing, Coach, take us to the end of the game and what you talked about with Jeff Allen about the uh, – the kicking game there. <laughs> 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 they got they got they got Jeff Allen. It was just a great coaching move. Is what it was. Yeah, now uh, uh, our corner on their last touchdown that they scored. Uh, our corner, who's also our extra point kicker, both legs cramped up. We could not get cramps out, so he's over there on the sideline. Didn't come back in the game. Rest of the game, and he's cramped up. So after we scored, I mean, it was really a no brainer. We was going to go for two. We had. Awesome. We'd worked on the reverse to Cooper. I mean, we'd worked on it all week. Hadn't ran it worth a crap all week, <laughs> just to be honest. We, and they ran it about as perfect as it could. And, you know, it's like we said today, he could have moonwalked into the end zone over there on the two point conversion. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just a good coaching move. Yeah, it was just a good coaching move. That's what we're doing. <laughs> now, that, that was when you look over there and you're doggone. Kicker's got both legs up in there with somebody massaging his calves right there. And after that, you go, ah, it's sort of no brainer. Let's go for it. So, uh, but that was the story behind going for the two point conversion. Now, that I heard that story. I was like, man. You know, on paper, probably everybody stands like, oh, Coach Howard's got guts. Look at this. He's going for green. <laughs> right. But at the same time, that's right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Take us back to the game in general and definitely talk about that play, that two point conversion. But you two guys connected, and you stepped in for your brother now, um, and now you're showing your brother how to play quarterback. I know that. <laughs> See, you didn't have to say that after all. He said it for you. <laughs> yeah. before, before we get into that, could take us back to the game, and then obviously uh, ended on that play and how that looked. Uh, I think that I think that we came in and wasn't really all that ready for their energy. Yeah, Coach Howard and them had been talking about how hot that was going to be and all the energy that was going to bring, uh, bring, but. They had a big crowd, a hostile environment, and I think we kind of had to weather the storm and just kind of stay in the ball game. And we finally calmed them nerves that we had and came back to being us, I guess. I mean, like Coach Howard said, we didn't play too great, but San Rod's a good team, and they kind of caused a little bit of that. But uh, the two-point play, Coach Howard called it, and I guess me and Drew just knew we had to score. So. Yeah. And um, I'm really kind of curious why you didn't moonwalk in the end zone. I'm telling you why I've been back <laughs> I mean, Because I can't move on. That's the <laughs> I see him doing it. I can only see him doing it. Oh, uh, then now. you, then you what, right when you see him doing that, realize that'll be the last time you ever see Cooper Robinson, okay? <laughs> just, just go ahead and throw that out there. <laughs> now, now, you're stepping in. Um, so, when you seen your brother go down, um, what was that like, first of all, when you seen him get injured this year? I know you had to be heartbroken for him. What was going through your head when you seen that? Well, Knowing that that was happening and then you was going to be a quarterback. At first, when they told me I was going to quarterback, I really didn't know what they was talking about because I never seen Chaz get hurt. I just – Coach Murphy came up to me. He's like, get some snaps. You're about to go into quarterback. And, like, after that, that was all there with me, helping me get through it. But now you guys, um, I mean, having him on the sidelines now, and you kind of taking those reps with the ones, it's kind of had to slow down a little bit for you and you can get you settled in. So what's it been like since you you know, like, hey, it's my team now, it's time to move forward. I know you got a very great receiver right here, one of the best in all 2A, unbelievable guy, and a great coaching staff beside you. Talk about how it is now knowing that you're the guy. Well, it's a big difference from playing receiver and quarterback. I have a lot more responsibilities. But I have a lot of help around me with the coaching is helping me. And Cooper out here catching all the balls I throw up to him, yeah, and a good line blocking for me. That's right. You got you got you got a little bit of help around this. Mm -hmm. now. But now you guys have played some uh, really tough competition as well. So um, mm -hmm. did you guys seen the rise of the occasion. Um, y'all play is tough. Like he said, I mean, you know, if y'all want a season team, that kind of environment could spiral out of control. Yeah. And, but you know, you guys are you face adversity many times. What you, what you got? Uh. I got a question, a comment that leads into a question. Your situation being quarterback. Now, I'm the kind of guy that, hey, I might never get to play quarterback the rest of this might be my only chance. I mean, it would be a small part of it. And I always want to do what the coach says. But at the same time, I was like, hey, let's air it out and just throw it 40 yards down the field and see what happens. But that comment going into this, now, coach, during the game, what's the one thing that would probably set you off like the, your top level anything? Oh, they ain't one thing. 
You've uh-huh. never seen it? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> the quarterback going down the field not supposed to? No, he did that. I'd kill him. <laughs> so, but, no, I, I mean, you say that, but we actually run a system where he reads it. He, he's got option to this side for a pass, option to that side for a pass, or run play. And he comes up to the line, and it's all read on him. And, uh, you know, Chaz, great player. I mean, you know, probably, you know, according to a lot of the coaches, may still end up being the MVP in our region. Uh, but thing that don't go, that goes unnoticed a lot of times was, you know, uh, Chapel was going to be our quarterback for the next two years. So it's not like we just said, okay, you know, one year we got a quarterback hurt on Wednesday before we had to play a game. We literally went out there on Thursday and said, okay, guys, has anybody ever taken a snap before? <laughs> because we didn't have a backup quarterback at that time. I didn't run, I never did reps with a backup quarterback, and that taught me. You know, he was doing defensive back drill, and it's his first cousin. But he was doing defensive back drill and separated his shoulder on Wednesday at the end of practice. Wow. Thursday, we find out he can't even move his arm. We're getting ready to play a region game, and we have not taken a snap oh, with the number two quarterback. So we go in. I had a little kid that looked at me and said, well, Coach, in C-team ball, I was quarterback. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you got it, man. Let's go. <laughs> of course, they all also got to understand that that, that was back during our true wing T years where yeah, we didn't yeah. throw but like two passes a game. Yeah. You know. Uh, you got to handle that snap. You do, but, uh, Dude, that's awesome. So, I love it. Had some, hey, he did. He went on. He's a grad assistant at Jack State Sun Insurance now, but he looked at me and said, well, I coach, I, coach, I, I, I took some snaps in C-team. That's the closest thing to say, man. I play Madden, coach. Yeah, that yeah, was pretty much it. <laughs> coach, I, I'm pretty good at Madden now. I do this. So, Dude, that's awesome. But uh, we had some, had some runs. I had a quarterback blow his ACL out against Collinsville. And I'm taking him off field, and I have another kid that hadn't taken a snap. That was week four, hadn't taken a snap since spring. He meets me out there, taking his gloves off, going, "All right, I know the whole playbook. Where you gonna run?" See, that's awesome. And that's we awesome. never missed a beat. And I mean, he went straight in and was quarterback the rest of that year. Took us to the second round of the playoffs. Lost by one to Gaston in the second round when that was the Jarbo Demont team oh, no. back then. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's pretty solid. <laughs> no doubt. So, you guys got some chemistry rolling now, though, right? Good, man. That's yeah, right. Good, man. That's right. I'm sure y'all fast, uh, you know, in the off season together before. You guys look like getting rats together. Yes, sir. That's right, man. Hey, uh, we're looking forward to big things with you guys, man, because yeah. I love season teams like you guys, and I like how you guys just continue to work. You know, you don't, you know, it ain't nothing that, um, the hard work goes in what you guys do, man. Being up there seeing that weight room and seeing what you guys do and grind, man. And love how the family and atmosphere up there, man, and all the coaches and all sports come together. Yeah, like the shirts in this family. That's right, man. I love it. Coach, I appreciate you guys making the trip. Good luck to you guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank you all for having us.